Are you interested in regearing your axles? Maybe you lifted your Jeep, maybe you put bigger tires on it. Today we're going to go over all the things you need to know and all the stuff you're going to need to redo the axles in your Jeep. Starting with our front axle guys, we have a new differential carrier. This is needed due to the gear ratio that the Jeep currently has in it to go up to our next gear ratio. The carrier also comes with the proper bolts that we need to bolt the ring gear on. And I believe, yes, our roll pin. So we'll get into details on all of that stuff when we get to those steps. Also, thanks to Yukon Gear and Axle, not sponsored by the way. I didn't even pay for these parts, not my key. We have a master install kit. I will give you guys a close up of this so you know what we have here in this master install kit. Because you will want one. Last but not least, we have our Yukon Gear Axle Ring and Pinion. So these ring gears and pinion gears, folks, are all made as a pair. And I will show you a little bit of detail on that too up close. You should be able to look at these and find a stamping on them. This looks like it says 1012 on the end of it. And if I look on this gear set, it should also have a print mark that says 1012. It's actually stamped in here. So 1012. These gears will also have the ratio on them. This does say 456 JK. It's very important that you buy gears for a JK. If you're working on a JK or a TJ, if you're working on TJ, um, not all Dana 30s are the same. There's also a high pinion model. Uh, those were a lot in the Grand Cherokees, I believe. So it is important that you find out which gear set you need for what you're working on. We've got a JK, so we've got a set of JK gears. For the back. We have a new dip cover. Not necessary, but it is what the customer wanted. So, really nice poison spider dip cover. That way, you can look good while you're pulling out all those pickup trucks, right? Again, a, the same master, not the same master rebuild kit, a different master rebuild kit that has all of our bearings in it, gasket in it, crushed leads. And again, we will get into more detail on the purpose of those things. And again, another gear set. I will check this gear set off camera to make sure everything matches up. All right, guys, before we get started, I did mute the audio on this so that way I didn't kill your ears as we go through here. So I took the axle nut off. Now I'm going to turn the spindle by putting my pry bar back behind the ball joints and on the caliper. That gives me access to these caliper bolts and will also slightly compress that brake caliper a little bit, making it easier to remove. Once all the bolts are out, I also want to pop a couple of these clips on the back side for the ABS sensor. That way it's no longer connected to my caliper hose back there. It was in the way a little bit. Now if you've done this part of the job before, feel free to skip ahead. I'm just trying to do step by step for everything. Once that caliper's off, I'm going to hang it off of the S hook. This is one that I've made out of some brake tubing. I just bent it up so that way I can hang my caliper from it so I'm not straining my hose. So once our caliper's off, we can pop our rotor out of the way. Then we were going to finish removing our ABS sensor. You see I've got it popped out all the clips. I got it disconnected from where it was attached to the hose. And the sensor goes behind the wheel well. Now with this aftermarket wheel well in here, I had a tough time getting it out of there. I wasn't able to photo that or video that, but you can see it's back in there. Use two hands, get your hand up inside the frame rail, and you can get it out of there. So Now I highly recommend when you pull this wheel bearing to use the 12 point socket that fits on there. It's 13 millimeter, I believe, and I hammer it on there. Make sure you've got this thing hammered on there good and tight so you do not strip the bolts out. Now I use a half inch drive 
ratchet with a long handle from my folks over at Snap-on and an adapter. So this breaks these loose fairly easily. Just be careful that you do not round the heads over on these bolts because you will be upset when you go to try and remove them. Now there is three of them you'll have to get. When your socket gets stuck on there because you hammered it on, just thread the bolts in a handful of, a handful of times, finger tight, and hit it off with a chisel. So now don't take your hammer to this hub to remove it because you are gonna damage the bearing. We need to get behind it with a chisel and the backing plate and tap around this thing to get it out. I have seen people go and put the bolts back in and use an air hammer on the back side of the bolts to pull them out. I've actually done it that way myself before. It does work just fine. Um, I feel this method's easier. Again, volume was muted so that way I could use my air hammer. I'm not gonna sit there all day with a, with a hammer and chisel. If I don't have to, it does take a little bit longer to do it that way versus the air hammer. And I got one, so here we go. You can see the dust flying from the rust in this thing. And there we go, a little bit of finesse, work your way around, and you will have it eating out of the palm of your hand. Literally, right? So axle shaft did not want to separate from the wheel bearing. I didn't want to force it because I didn't have to. The axle shaft will pull right out of there as an assembly. So I like to loosen the fill plug before I ever take a diff cover off. That way, if I want to sand this thing and paint it, it'll come off easy. I know I'm not gonna have an issue when I go to refill it because I can loosen the fill plug up already, so we'll be good to go. Now I took my impact, zipped all of the bolts out except for one or two of them on the top side. They are loose, but not all the way out. Go around, tap this with a hammer and chisel. Be careful not to damage the cover or the axle housing. Take your time, work it around a little bit. This had RTV on it and it was sealed in pretty good. Leaving those bolts in the top allows me to drain this thing without dropping the whole cover on the floor and throwing gear loops all over the place. Now I'm gonna pop this thing off. The next thing I always like to do is check my backlash. I always like to take a starting backlash to see where my gear set's at before I start to make any repairs. You can see we've got eight thousandths of backlash. That's perfect. So now before I take my bearing cups off, my bearing caps, I always mark my bearing caps. I do it on the top side. I put one dot on the right side, two dots on the left side every time. That's just the way I do it. And also mark the housing. Now I will show you later when I had this all apart and got everything cleaned up, I could see where someone had been in there and put marks on it before that were different than mine. So next thing I want to do is pull the drive shaft. I always mark drive shafts before I remove them. That way I can put them back together with the mark and it will help me eliminate any possible drive line issues after reassembly or upon reassembly, I should say. Once we get the four bolts out of this thing, it will slide right out of the way. I always like to check my U-joints while I'm there. The U-joints look good, so we're done with that for now. I'm going to pull my differential carrier caps off, my bearing caps. I like to thread in the top two bolts, just a couple of threads by hand, because this thing's going to fit in here tight, and we're going to have to use a pry bar to pop it out. So be careful with the pry bar. Again, you don't damage the bottom side of your axle housing. So this one popped out of here fairly easy. Now try to, if you can, and I missed them on this, grab your side bearing shims. And I'll show you in the bottom of the axle housing here. There's my side bearing shims sitting in there. So they may be the same from side to side, most likely they are not. So keep an eye on which side those go on, put a mark on them if you want, that's probably the best idea. So once I get that out of there, I'm going to grab my big pry bar again and I'm going to pop out the axle seals. The axle seals on the Dana 30s are on the inside, not the outside. So now it's time to pull our pinion. Sometimes you can get lucky, you can grab this with your hand and pull a pinion off. Uh, most of the time you cannot. So simple, got my big pry bar out again. I stuffed a bolt in the one opening that was there 
and there's my pinion nut. Now the pinion's not just going to come off, you're going to have to use a puller, possibly, or you can use an air hammer. So if I know it's a pinion that I'm not using, I don't mind banging on the end of it with my air hammer. I'm going to pop that seal out after my pinion is out. We do have some stuff underneath of here you need to pay attention to. So one of them being our oil slinger and our bearing. Both will be replaced. The crush leaf stayed in there and there's also a bearing cup that needs to be removed out of there. Next step for us is to disassemble our differential carrier. I'll try to do this as fast as possible for the video. Now I always leave a couple of bolts in there because that gear is somewhat pressed on when you put it all together. So one or two hits with a punch and it will come free. And now we can swap this gear off of here. <clears throat> now I did grab my other carrier. Like I said, we were replacing the carrier in the front of this vehicle. Once I put it up here, I noticed they were the same. So we thought that the axle ratio was different than what it was. And you could see why that would have to be changed. There would be a big difference in those gears. Now obviously these gears are going to be a different size but the flanges where they mount are the same. So because we had 373, and I did verify that by counting and looking at their markings, we do not need to swap the carriers. That means I need to pull the bearings off of the carrier. You can see here my bearing puller, how it works, and in order to pull that bearing off of there, we need to, there's already an air gap, you can see where I've worked on it, we need to pull the bearing away a little bit here. I'm just grabbing my hammer and my chisel and getting in and tapping behind it. So you could pull this all the way off that way if you would like. If you don't have a bearing puller, I got a bearing puller, so I'm gonna put it on here. Now this bearing puller, the, uh, the threads were getting pretty worn out on it for adjusting the side to side tightness. So I threw a hose clamp on there, keeping it a little janky. And there is our bearing. Now I did have to throw a socket in there so I had something to push off of. When it comes to our bearing install, we need to make sure that we do not do anything to that outer cage that's holding our roller bearings in place there. So this is the install tool for this Dana 30 front carrier. I'm just going to get it positioned here. You can see there's no bearing on the bottom and I'm gonna send it with a hammer. I'm trying to keep it easy for you guys. Could have put this in the press, but wanting to show a couple different ways to do it. So, and if you would like to see a method of doing it without having some of these tools, um, I go through some more of that on my Dana 44 build that I will link to this video. At this time, it's not published yet. So now when we flip this over, we need to make sure that we have the proper adapter on the back size of it. You could use washers if that's what you had. Again, we need to make sure that we do not damage that bearing cage on the outside of that bearing. So I'm going to tap this one back in here with the hammer again. Not a whole lot to it. When I was working at the dealership, when I first started out, we didn't even have a press. This is how we did all of them. So now with that all set in there, I have got my pinion, or I'm sorry, I've got my differential gear on. I was trying to read that also. Um, I tightened everything up already. So that way it was pressed into place. Now I'm pulling the bolts back out. I'm putting Loctite on them and I'm going to torque them to the specs like you've just seen on the sheet right there. Every gear set you buy generally will come with a spec sheet. I don't recall ever buying one before that didn't have the specs on it. So now that axle wasn't too bad. I was actually able to hold it and in place by hand and torque those down. I have had ones where I've had to put them in a vise and that's what we do with the Dana 44. So air hammer again, going at it. I'm gonna remove this bearing cup, probably smash the camera with it. We'll see what happens. Now I'm removing the bearing cup from the inner pinion bearing and I also move, remove that uh, oil dam that was there. I don't want to call it a slinger because it doesn't move with the pinion. So it got damaged, had to get a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and press off my pinion bearing. There is a shim under here which we will need 
in order to do our proper setup. So thankfully it pressed out, no harm done. There is our shim. So some of these shims you may be able to see writing on, others you will not. Grab your micrometer, your calipers, whatever you have. So that way you can measure it. I can't remember what that shim was off the top of my head. I did write it down, but I'm uh, a couple months into shooting this video from editing. So I was not able to uh, have that for you guys. I will say, however, it was not the projected shim for setup that came with my chart. So that uh, you will see as we go here, this bearing is going to get pulled off a couple more times. So. Here's a quick setup of what everything needs to look like and what we've got going. When you have this assembled, we've got our shim, we've got our inner pinion, there's a crush lead, and then we have our outer pinion bearing. So, And then we've got our slinger, I'll call this one because it goes on the back side of there, and a new seal, and a new nut. So in order to do setup, I always use an old nut and I'll go over more on that later also. So Now you see I've got an oversized bearing there. I made that bearing so that way I could press this pinion bearing on. You need something that's not going to get stuck on the uh, pinion but will, <clears throat> will rest on that inner pinion race. That way we do not damage this cage. So you can see in there the shim is there. We're going to send this thing down, make sure it's pressed tight, and we can start doing some install and setup. So, there is that slinger, or dam as I might like to call it. Um, that's a brand new one, came in the Master Rebuild Kit. You can see I've got a new bearing race, and I am going to hammer it in here with my race and seal driver. Now if you don't have a race and seal driver, you can potentially use an old brace to hammer that in there. Uh, make sure you're doing something that is soft if you're putting anything on there. A brass punch, something made out of aluminum like these are. You don't want to use a steel punch and damage your bearing cup. So before we put all this stuff together, I like to do some pre-lube on it. You're way better off having your bearing lubricated than having them dry when you put this thing together. So you can't put too much on them, but a little bit is better than none. So there is our outer, there is our one slinger. I'm going to put my seal up in here because I don't need to mess with this stuff anymore. So these seals can be fun to put in sometimes. They'll try and pop out on you. I usually just use a little hammer and gently go around the side. So you can see here I have a used nut. I took a file to the inside of that used nut and I ground out all of the areas on it where it had been crushed down to use as a lock nut. So now I'm able to spin that nut freely just to do setup. When we do our final assembly, that nut will have to be replaced. So in order to get our backlash and everything set on this, we need to snug that up by hand. Make sure you have no more play in the pinion. So, I found this to be a good time to install my axle seals or otherwise I would most likely forget to install my axle seals. So you may want to install your axle seals at the same time you remove them. Now you can install them with a socket but it makes for a pretty short throw so I grabbed my race installing tool that way I can get a little bit or some better swing with my hammer. Now you can see on these bearing caps where I had my mark there's my two dots up there at the top and you can see that sideways line there next to the 3197 that appeared to be somebody else's stamp there's their sideways line again and there's my two dots so when i put this thing together i know i'm going to have it in the proper spot and there's the line from the other side so they just did a line going up and down and a line going side to side um, that's fine whatever works for you whatever you've got so now <clears throat> This, shim, this axle I'm putting together right now with the same shims that I removed out of it. Um, you may need to take a wooden handle to tap it in there. Be careful, you don't want to eat on these with your hammer and damage them. So Now I've got my caps 
in there. I've got them torqued down. I need to check my gear pattern at this point to see what I've got. Now when you check your gear pattern, you wanna make sure you load this ring gear. And when I say load the ring gear, it needs to be a little bit hard to turn. So go in both directions. If it's super easy to turn, you won't get a good squish of that gear marking compound between the teeth, no. Now I'm not happy with this gear mark I've got here. You can see I'm way into the inside and I'm way out on the outside. My heel to toe, I'm not happy with, so. I'm going to take, set my pinion bearing back up in the press so I can press it out, and I'm going to change pinion depth. So, here's my sheet. My original pinion shim, 52 thousandths. Now what I want to do with this is go through my kit. That's what all of these little shims are for in the kit. They come so that way you can get this stuff set up. So. I grab my dial caliper because it's a little bit easier to take measurements with to show them on the screen. It doesn't matter what you have, dial caliper or a micrometer, whichever works best for you, whichever you have access to. So I've added to my shim. I've got my oversized bearing on here again. You can see, boom, two shims. I'm gonna put this thing together and I'm gonna see what I've got. Now what I would recommend you do is make a big change. Make a really big change when you do this kind of stuff so you can see what you get. If you move this thing 20 thousandths, you're gonna see a pretty significant change and then you can fine tune it from there. I feel I can do it faster by making one big change that kind of gives me a set point of if my, if my change just made my problem twice as worse, or if it adjusted it too far the opposite direction, then I can split it halfway or whatever it might be and sneak up on it like that. So at this point, since I've moved my pinion and I was happy with where my backlash was at, I also need to move my side gears. So I changed my shims on my side gears a little bit, moving them, moving it further away, and I've got 8 thousandths backlash. I'm loving it, and I'm looking at my gear pattern. Oh, I don't think it's perfect, so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do this again, but we're definitely getting better. So, a little bit of adjustment with the pinion. I was happy with where I ended up, and now I'm going to do my final assembly. So, final assembly, new pinion nut. You can see I've uh, bolted my pry bar in here, so that way I've got multiple bolts to hold this thing in place and I am going to tighten this down until it's not loose anymore. That's our big target right here. Get the looseness out of it. And you can see I'm dropping my pry bar so that way I know roughly what my preload is and then I've got a dial torque wrench to check the preload with and I actually missed any video footage with that on this front diff rebuild so you will have to check out the rear diff when I do the Dana 44 build. I've got video of that being done. So once that's all set up, I'm gonna take torque down my bolts for the carrier and I'm going to check my backlash again. I've got eight thousandths of backlash. That is perfect. That's the number that I'm always looking for when I set up backlash. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna run my pattern again, look at that pattern, right in the center of those gears. That's exactly what we're looking for. So take your time, play around with your shims, get your pattern perfect, you won't regret it. So finishing up assembly, I clean these axle tubes all out. I clean the axle shafts all up. I lube my axle shafts before I put them in. And here I told you I would tell you how to fix those backing plates. This is my trick, guys. A little bit with a punch, and then put your bolts in from the back side. That gets everything all set up. Now to torque this axle nut, here's my favorite trick. I throw a pry bar and the vents on the rotor and that allows that to grab the caliper. So then we can torque down these axle nuts to the proper torque. Make sure you look it up. Super important for the right axle bearing preload. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you found it educational or even remotely entertaining, please take the time to like and subscribe to the channel. I know this video is missing some things. You'll find them in the Dana 44 rebuild, so check it out.